VLANs are one of the best ways to segment your network, but for most home users, they quickly become overcomplicated. You don't need 10 different VLANs just to get started, and adding too much complexity can actually make your network harder to manage. In this video, I'll break down the few VLANs that actually matter for a typical home setup, so you get the benefits of security and organization without turning your network into a headache. So to get started, the important thing to highlight is that there's not really a one size fits all approach. So it's not like everyone should be following the same setup, but there are some general VLANs that you can start with and build on top of. But before we get to that, we should probably answer the question of why you'd even want to use VLANs in the first place. VLANs allow you to segment your network. Rather than having everything on one network where all of your devices would be able to communicate with each other, you can segment that network and group them into similar types of devices. Then you can utilize firewall rules to block access between those groups or VLANs. This improves security because you're able to ensure that some of your more untrusted devices that you'll probably have like smart plugs, possibly security cameras, etc., cannot communicate with some of your more trusted devices where you're storing personal data, something like a NAS or a home server. In order to get there though, you need to plan out your VLANs and you don't wanna to get too specific, but you also don't wanna to be too broad. For example, if you have a bunch of smart home devices, you might wanna create something like an IoT VLAN for all of those smart home devices, but you're probably not going to wanna to create separate VLANs for the type of smart home device. You should group them all into a general category. So with that in mind, let's start with some basic VLANs that almost everyone should have, and then start to build out for some of those more unique scenarios to customize your home network even further. So we're gonna use a unified cloud gateway to display all of this, but realistically, since we're creating VLANs, this will work for whatever you're using. But we're gonna start small here, and this is a typical home network that I think a lot of people will start with. And you'll have a trusted VLAN, an IoT VLAN, and a guest VLAN, so trusted. This is generally going to be for all of the devices that you own that contain personal data. So your cell phones, your PCs, possibly if you have a NAS, if you have any home servers, et cetera. The reason that you're doing that is generally because you're utilizing those devices to access other trusted devices. So for example, if you have a smartphone and you have a NAS device and you have a photos application on that NAS device, you're gonna to wanna to access that NAS device. And while technically you can put those servers or NAS devices on a separate VLAN, we wanna to try to group them into devices that we either trust or don't trust so that we can create firewall rules off of them. And that's where I said earlier, things can get very specific, but you really don't wanna take them down that path. Otherwise, it's going to be very, very difficult to manage. So for a trusted VLAN, that will contain all of the devices that you trust. Next will be an IoT VLAN. Now, IoT VLANs are generally used for various different things depending on the person. I feel like almost everyone has an IoT VLAN, but very few of them are the same. So I'll give you what I have on my IoT VLAN, but theoretically it could be different for you. So for me, almost everything that I have from a smart home perspective, especially things that I don't trust are on my IoT VLAN. That includes, but is not limited to things like smart plugs, things like thermostats, things like smart TV hubs, just about any smart home device that is Wi-Fi oriented. And generally, they all share something in common. They're all in one way or another linked to a category of devices that I need to access the internet. Overall, it's not super important if they can or cannot access each other, but they have to access the internet. I have to be able to access them from my trusted VLAN, but overall, a way to group them and keep them isolated. That's my IoT VLAN. A lot of other people will have other things like security cameras and more, but we'll talk about that in a minute here. The next one would be a guest VLAN. This is an easy one. Generally, you don't wanna add guests that access your network. 
to your trusted or IoT VLAN. You would want them to access it utilizing their own VLAN, in this case, a guest VLAN. This allows you to ensure that they cannot access anything. And then you can even apply certain filters and stuff like that, depending on exactly what you want and what you want guests to be able to access. Now, from a subnet perspective, realistically, it doesn't really matter. Some people like to utilize 192.168.1 and just keep incrementing one, so one, two, three, four, et cetera. Or you can use something totally different like 10.5.0 or 10.5.1. It's kind of up to you. There's not a right or wrong. I would suggest you get off of the default. So 192.168.1. And in certain cases for things like VPN servers, it can be a problem. But generally, generally, I'm talking for the average home user, it's not something that you have to go crazy about, but wouldn't hurt to get off 192.168.1 or 192.168.0, which are both very common. Now, this network design right here is something that the majority of people would technically be able to implement and have a pretty segmented network with firewall rules. Obviously, you have to create firewall rules. I have a video that showcases exactly how to do that. But with firewall rules and these three VLANs here, you will technically be able to segment your network and improve security. But how can we build on top of this? The way that we can build on top of this is going to be dependent on exactly what you have on your network. So an example for me is going to be a surveillance VLAN. Now, this surveillance VLAN here is something that I create for my security camera. So if you have security cameras, what I like to do is I like to group them into their own network. With that done, there are things that you can do. An example being that if you have cameras that are generally not trusted, they're a lot of the times not updated, you can ensure that they can't access the internet, stuff like that. So rather than going in and specifying individual firewall rules for individual devices, adding them on, let's say, an IoT VLAN and then blocking access that way, you group them all together into their own isolated VLAN where they cannot access any other devices based on the firewall rules. And then you create one blanket firewall rule that blocks access to the internet. Now, why is it important to segment them in the first place? For things like security cameras, if you're using Ubiquiti security cameras, I always say this to clients that I work with, Ubiquiti security cameras are updated. They're not posing the same security risk that something like other security cameras, I'm not gonna name any brands, but something like other security cameras that are never updated are posing. So for example, a lot of people get security cameras, they install that security camera, and then seven years goes by and they have never been updated ever. If those devices are able to access the internet, if other devices on your network are able to access those devices, if they're able to access other devices, you could technically have a security gap there. That doesn't necessarily mean it will be exposed, but it could at some point be a problem. If at any point it could be a problem, it's better to segment it now. Don't wait until it becomes a problem, segment it now. Now that's not to say that if you have something that's more trusted like ubiquity cameras that are often updated, that you shouldn't isolate them. You, you can isolate them if you want. But the key here is that we're grouping them into a surveillance VLAN so that we can create firewall rules for this entire VLAN. They shouldn't have to access anything. The NVR should be able to access them and you should be able to access the NVR. That's kind of how that works. Now this setup right here is where you can start to take it one step further, but you are going to be adding complexity. Up to this point, all of these VLANs generally will be easy to manage, assuming that you have your firewall rules in place and they are correct. Now, we're going to start talking about things like a management VLAN and an isolated VLAN for external traffic, which we'll talk about in a second here. But I wanna be clear that this is taking your setup one step further and adding some complexity to it. So I just added a management VLAN. Now, generally, a management VLAN is used for physical devices. So in the context of a unified network here, this is going to be your switches, your access points, everything for your hardware itself would be on a management VLAN. 
This ensures that you could do one of two things. You could either limit traffic to those devices to let's say only your trusted VLAN, or you could even block it that way and say, you know what? Nothing should ever be able to SSH into these devices. And for that reason, I'm gonna block it right off the bat. Now a management VLAN really generally depends on exactly what you have on your network. So for example, if you're somebody that has 10 different sets of devices, meaning 10, four access points and five switches, et cetera, you're now veering into the category where you have a lot of hardware. A management VLAN might make sense. But if you're somebody that has like one switch, you might just want to add that to the trusted VLAN. So the trusted VLAN can include your hardware as well. It doesn't have to only be trusted devices. You can include your PC and your NAS and your home server network, that trusted VLAN. You can include this hardware as well. It's not necessary to create a management VLAN, but it does take it one step further, but it does complicate things. So I want to be clear, you have to really determine why you would want it in the first place. And then secondarily, you have to determine if it even makes sense to isolate those devices. If either of those concerns you, don't go crazy. You can put them in the trusted VLAN. You're probably going to be fine. Now, the next and final VLAN that we will talk about is an external VLAN. And generally, you don't want to do any port forwarding on your local network if you don't have to. There are a lot of people that will fight that comment, but if security is important to you, you should utilize a VPN assuming that you can access your service utilizing a VPN. That's number one. Number two, there are a lot of people that want to port forward. And if you want to port forward, I'm not here to tell you not to, but I am here to say that you should isolate that into its own VLAN possibly multiple VLANs. And this is where things can get very, very complicated depending on exactly what you want to do. So I have a video that showcases how to set up a Cloudflare tunnel. And the easiest way to kind of set that up is actually by putting that Cloudflare tunnel, that VM or Docker, whatever you're running it with, putting that on its own VLAN and then poking holes using firewall rules into your other VLANs so that it can only access those specific services without being able to access everything. If that doesn't make any sense to you and you're interested in it, I will leave a pop-up to a video now. But the reason why you at minimum need to isolate your traffic is because if in any way you are port forwarding something, you are exposing that device to the world. Now, with firewall rules, you want your goal is to limit that traffic. So it's not necessarily the case that you're exposing it to the entire world. It could be a subset of IPs. It could be a country. It could be multiple countries. But only you will know exactly what technically can access that device. But regardless, if you have an external VLAN, you can call it whatever you want. What you're saying is that, God forbid, that that device in any way is compromised. If it starts to probe other devices on your local network, it will only access whatever is on that external VLAN. And using Ubiquiti's zone-based firewall, they even have a DMZ zone in here, which basically allow you to just put it in here and ensure that it's isolated from everything. Now, the important part here is that if you're somebody that will be port forwarding, you should have either one or multiple VLANs for those systems really depends on the requirements. However, for the average person, if you're not port forwarding anything, which generally I would say that you probably shouldn't, but if you're not port forwarding anything, then you don't need this. Now, the final thing I wanna talk about is devices that don't fall into a category. So this happens a lot, a lot more often than you'd think. Something like a printer, where are you gonna put it? Are you gonna put it on your trusted VLAN because that's a device that you trust? Are you gonna put it on your IoT VLAN because you don't trust it? It depends. There's not necessarily a right or wrong answer. You kinda of wanna look at it from a security perspective. And you wanna say, is there any scenario where the printer should have to access your trust devices? For most people, it's not gonna be the case. You would want your trusted devices to be able to access the printer, but not necessarily the printer to be able to access the trusted devices. And that, little information, as silly as it sounds, is really what you need to determine what VLAN it should be a part of. So if it should communicate with other devices, 
then you would put it on, let's say, a trusted VLAN. But if it should not, that's when you get into a situation of where should it go? For a lot of people, the IoT VLAN becomes the catch-all bucket. If you don't know where it goes, it goes into the IoT network. I'm not saying that that's right, just saying that that's what happens a lot. So that's the way I would approach devices that don't fall into a category. Now you're gonna run into other problems. I've worked with clients that have Sonos devices and Sonos is, I don't have one, but supposedly very specific on how it communicates with each other and how it communicates with the device that is trying to connect to that. It's not always the easiest to get those devices to communicate with one another. And in situations like that, it's kind of hard. You're going to have to make a sacrifice in some way. The sacrifice would be either lowering security and saying those Sonos devices are going to be on the same VLAN as my trusted device so that I could stream back and forth, or I'm going to create a completely separate VLAN for the Sonos devices. I'm gonna assign that VLAN to a Wi-Fi network. I'm gonna to connect to that Wi-Fi network whenever I wanna access those devices, but generally, I'm not going to be able to access them because I will generally be on the trusted VLAN and that will be on the Sonos VLAN. So VLANs in general are going to be highly, highly, highly specific based on your individual hardware. If you don't have a Sonos system, that's not even on your radar. But if you do have a Sonos system, most likely you're going to be in this situation. You have to figure out how you want to handle it. So the overall key is that while we went over today six different VLANs, the majority of people should probably have three. If you have cameras, you might want four. Anything more than four is when things start to get difficult to manage. And you can trust me because I have a lot of them. They are all needed for what I do, but I'm in a very unique situation. I'm running this entire channel here. So there's a lot of stuff that I have to test, et cetera. So I have a lot more VLANs than the average person. But the point remains that the more VLANs you have, the harder it is to manage. And overall, you wanna keep management at the forefront when you're a home user. So I know this was a lot. Obviously, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave those in the comments. But other than that, if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.